said, welcome to the Horseman Podcast, an open conversation about our passions, interesting topics with a free-flowing structure. Today we are on episode four. Episode four. Of season two. Uh, we're going to be discussing, you know, happiness, mental health, all of that. So please stay tuned with us. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, we're a couple weeks into December yep. now, and uh, we're getting into the, you know, the craziness of the Christmas season, I guess it would be. And I think one thing that, you know, when it comes to when it comes to like the Christmas hol- um, Christmas season, I, I guess one thing that does kind of go under the radar is um, happiness in a general sense. I think also like going with happiness in a general sense is kind of a uh, self worth yeah. as well too. Yeah, I feel um, that even though this is like a really great and happy time, also as well t- too is just like we start reevaluating what happiness is for us mm-hmm. um and we find happiness in a bunch of different ways yeah uh so that's what we're going to be talking about this week is happiness yeah i think like again you know happiness can come in like a lot of different forms mm-hmm. there's so many different ways that you can be happy or you can find happiness um there's a lot of people that find happiness in their work. There's a lot of people that find happiness in their community. And there's a lot of people that just find happiness within themselves, too. And I think that kind of goes, like you're saying, kind of goes a little bit out the window. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't get talked about too much. And I think with the, like the, the sound, like the happiness and how it takes different forms is, you know, I, I, I have a few examples of them. And I think a couple of them is like, you know, when you're a kid, you're, you're you're laying down in the meadow, right? You're looking up at the sky and you see a funny cloud. That's pretty. That's pretty fun. That, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's and joyful. And it kind of gives you kind of gives you like this happiness feeling. It's like, huh, even the clouds take different forms, right? And you know, it could be you know waking up in the morning and putting putting the cream in your coffee, or sitting down on the piano and playing a musical note, or you know, if you're out in the woods and you're chopping firewood for your warm fireplace, you know, that sound of the axe hitting the wood. There's something different about it. You know, some of us sports. I'm a big baseball guy. You know, there's something that makes me happy is the sound of of a fastball thwacking the mitt. Right? That's that's something that you can find a little happiness into. And I think it's happiness incorporates curiosity. I think that's one thing that I found with it is there's a lot of things that make me happy in life, but there's not a lot of like curiosity. It's like what else can make me happy? You know, it's it's not just the mundane everyday lifestyle it's just it's sometimes it's just the tiny little things yeah absolutely and on psychology today i'm going to read you a few of these things you know and like you said you're learning to learn new things open to learn new things um high humility and patience Mm -hmm. smiles and laughs you know i think we've had a couple in this podcast yeah you know um goes with the fro practices compassion is often very grateful um, exercises self care, um, is happy for other people, gives and receives without any, you know, uh, torment, but in reality, you know, not asking anything in return, you know, uh, lives with meaning and purpose. Let's yeah. get into that as well, too, a little bit later in this episode. Doesn't feel entitled, um, is not spiteful or insulting, doesn't he hold any grudges, yeah. doesn't register, um, Small annoyances. Uh, I never really thought about that, you know. Yeah, like the, when when you're like in a really good mood, you know, like you kind of ignore, ignore those, those little like little small ones. Like I think, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny because like we were both like working in the kitchen, right? Oh yeah. And you find like these little like small annoying things. It's like, Dad, gum it, the chicken didn't come out right, mm-hmm. or you know. But when you're, you know, when we were like cooking, I think we kind of just said like ignored those factors. It was like. <laughs> the food's gonna taste good anyway. So you just and you, you it was keep with going. the company, yeah. And like it, it says here, like we don't play, we're not playing games, we're not playing the victim, and it's just like also it's just like we're not stinging with our happiness. Where it's just like I'm happy, I'm happy that you're not happy, you know. Oh. Um, and I think you know that's very important because it's just like I think you know what's what has not become a norm, but what's Come like more of a realization for everybody around us is just like we're we're all full of um, um, anxiety, depression, you know, and all of that. But I think sometimes it feels like happiness is way out there and it's completely unattainable. Mm. But I think we should start actually changing our mindsets around ha- what happiness 
is, is actually for yeah. us. And I think, you know, even though we'll have those like anxious and depressing moments, maybe this is a step in a healing or coping process for all of us to acknowledge is just like, you know, like the alternative is always worse, you know? Um, yeah. um, I'm, I'm kind of glad, you know, to be here and yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So happiness is like, it's one of those things where it's like, it can, like I was saying, it's can take different forms, but also like happiness means different things to different people too. Exactly. And I think that's the one thing that people overlook is that, you know, the happiness for me may not be the happiness for you. Oh, definitely But not. we do share some versions of happiness along the ways. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not a bad thing to disregard another person's happiness, but it is a bad thing to be happy when other people – when to be happy that other people aren't, like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Is I think we – I think when you're approaching the subject of being happy – it's a you need to look at it more of a uh, of a selfish matter and then the, it, it, i'll explain that a little no, bit no no and, and i think you know the word selfish shouldn't be painted in like a negative yeah it's this like word because it's, there's there's no there, it's not a there are a lot of things is not to be selfish about mm -hmm. right there's like there are certain things that people are like oh that's super selfish like it's actually not because for for one thing it's okay let's say that for example, let's say that you have grown up in a community where Christmas doesn't mean the same to you. Oh, like, yeah. It's just like Christmas has never been happy for you. So you mm -hmm. change the scene and you're like, all right, I'm going to go out and I'm going to make Christmas happy. Right? I'm going to go find that community to be a part of. I'm going to be happy on Christmas. And you're finally happy on Christmas and people are just like, why don't you go and do this? Because it doesn't make me happy. Exactly. And it's that's not selfish at all. That's, that is – that is knowing your self worth, like you were saying before. That's also self -care. knowing it's it's self care. It's also knowing what makes you happy because you don't want to be around stuff that doesn't make you happy. You will find yourselves in periods of time where you're not going to be happy. And also as well too, I think those periods of time where you feel like you're not happy, I feel like sometimes, you know, like, like let's look like a flower for a second, you know, and. It's just like sometimes the sunshine isn't really shining upon this flower, you know, and it's still in its growing state and it's not even blue, blooming. And, you know, it's just like flowers grow even when the sky is gray, Yeah. you know, and I think that is something very important because I feel like that goes with our happiness as well, you know. Shout out to all these guys from Bring Me the Horizon for that line. Right. Um, but, but there's so much truth behind that. You know, even Mike Posner, he's like, the sun is shining, you know, even above the clouds. Hmm. And I think, you know, it's easy to see everything. I'm sorry to get existential here, but, you know, like what's in front of us. And it's just like sometimes we do miss the big picture and it's all right. You know, even, you know, God, Nikki Six, you know, <laughs> from 6 a.m. <laughs> said we we all fall off the wagon. Sometimes it's not your whole life. It's only one day you haven't thrown everything away, you know, and. I believe that, you know, with happiness as well, too. We, we Sometimes we find ourselves in this, like, kind of mid-area yeah. where you're like, oh, man, will I ever be happy again? Will I ever see this or will I ever see that? And, you know, sometimes you do see that, but sometimes you never do. And sometimes your happiness changed to something else. And that's totally okay. Yeah. And it doesn't mean, like, it's just part of growth, you know, and we can't explain growth sometimes, you know, looking at like, uh, I know I sound probably pretty high right now, but I'm, not, <laughs> I'm pretty sober, honestly, um, is like looking at, you know, butterflies, you know, starting out as caterpillars, you know, going into their cocoons before they come, you know, these beautiful creatures, you know, yeah. it like happiness is always changing, you know, the biggest thing is that like for me at least is that you gotta just keep keep continuing to grow and evolve yeah and it'll show you where you need to go yeah and i think oh i think one thing also is like there's there's all there's also myths about happiness too yes you know so like okay for example you know we were talking about social media a little bit before um and like i think it was a couple of weeks ago we were talking about social media in, in like a 
we're trying to like put it as not in like a negative sense as a tool rather. Mm-hmm. But I think there's I think the one thing consistently across social media I think that people get kind of caught up into is when you know, I reach this like count, when I reach this follower exactly, count, yeah. I'll be happy. Right, I'll be happy. Or when like it's like when I get to post myself on a private plane, I'll be happy. Right. You don't realize this is, it's a lot of people. It's like that's just that is that is not an ultimate peak of happiness. That is a temporary moment of mm-hmm. of this. You know what? I am. This is bliss right now. Yeah. But then as soon as you step off and, and you're done taking the photo shoot, you're done taking the photos, now you got to get back on – get to back to the on, reality of things. Exactly. And I think people often want to avoid difficult emotions um, so they can, they can reach for those fixes, right? But those, like, those indulgences, like they're, they're nice, peaceful moments of, of happiness and they kind of give you like this sense of satisfaction or this sense of purpose – but after you know only five minutes of it, you, it, it kind of goes a little bit of the wayside, and like you said, you have to get back in reality. And I think the the whole point of happiness is is it's not to find the five minutes of happiness; it's to it's to, the continuation of finding it in elsewhere. The consistency of happiness, yeah. yeah. And it's like there are there are like all hopes of like happiness on like on different things like. Um, being married or, or gaining fame or becoming success, wealthy, yeah. like success, being rich, you know, being an in, being an influencer. And guess what? You can be an influencer without having 2.4 million viewers and uh, 2.4 million followers on TikTok. Mm-hmm. You can definitely be an influencer in your own backyard. You know, um, I grew up in a very religious community, and there was always like this thing of you know doing your work in the back and in, in your backyard, and you know. It, in a sense, it's true everywhere else too because I I'm not about what's uh, what I'm gonna take with me. It's what I'm gonna leave behind, right? I wanna be I wanna leave behind like people look back and go, you know what? Fucking miss that, that guy because he told me jokes and kept me happy at work. There's a bunch of people. There's a bunch of people in my life who I have told an, a number of dad jokes to, including yourself. Oh yeah, man. That you just go, God damn it! There's those dad jokes, right? And once they're gone, though, you're like, yeah, I actually kind of miss those. And it's those little tiny moments where where you can where you can be happy, and then you and then you kind of miss them. And that's what starts the consistency of being happy is you leave behind these moments of happiness for other people to enjoy. And also as well too, it's not like ha- we're leaving it behind. It's just like after a while, you know, with my own journey, I just feel like it's an obligation. You know, for everybody else around me, yeah. Um, because it's just like I just can't ex- see myself, you know, just talking from personal experience, not doing the things that I'm doing now, because it's just like, you know, just working at the college, you know, in trade school is just like, I, and like influencing all these people through the media that they create. I just can't see myself, you know. It's just like, dude, this is, like. It was never like yeah we have stuff that's just like this is about me right but it's it's also never all about us as well too yeah you know it's just like we have to give you know without asking anything in return you know and i think that was like a way like at least for me where it's just like i found you know like happiness in a different way where it's just like oh man like i'm not like oh i have to be on a yacht you know this or that to be happy it's just like i now it's just like dude i just gotta you know it's it's not it's not doesn't feel like an obligation but it's Mm -hmm. just like i want to you know push and strive myself to do these things even though it may be a painful process you know like i have a lot of heartbreak in there but i feel an obligation because it's just like if i don't do it then who else is going to do that? Right. I know that seems like in a very impossible standard, you know, to some people, but like I'm okay with that. And I think that's something, you know, with happiness that can be like misunderstood is like being okay with that, you know, um, is just like, oh man, it's not this material thing. It's being okay with like, this is what I have to do, you know, it's just like I'm not going to fight it anymore. Mm-hmm. And, just you know taking responsibility and just like you know what 
I'm happy to do this, you know, even though it may not be the easiest thing in the world, you know, or I may not necessarily understand it, but you know what, I'm going to put my best foot forward, I'm going to fight through, you know, the uncertainty, mm -hmm. and I think that's what has made, you know, some of the more happier moments in my life is where I decided to, you know, go against, you know, adversity, right? Um, whatever form it had mm -hmm. maybe taking, you know, financially, personally, you know, relationshiply or whatever. It's just like, I'm just going to put my best foot forward and, you know, and, and that's all you can do. do. I mean, exactly. Because if, you, if you don't do anything, if you're just sitting on the couch and going, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be happy again. Well, guess what? All you have to do is get up off the couch and actually go and find something. Because if you're just sitting there, legitimately doing nothing mm -hmm. you're yeah. not there's 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 no point to like my thing is is like i i really don't like to complain oh yeah unless i can change the situation yes because at that point the complaint come the pl the complaint goes from complaint to noticing an issue and then my brain goes okay how do we solve it and how do we stop this issue from happening yeah and i think for a lot of people it's i'm not gonna say a lot of people well no i think like, for it's some, hard it's hard to say um like what is this people but the biggest thing that i think if we only had to give one piece of advice on this podcast um that you should really take seriously is that we personally believe that like you have to do something yeah. you have to go out and create some sort of action yep. and it doesn't have to be like this huge extraordinary like superhero moment it's just creating an action for yourself where you know like at the end of the day it's like you are able to say i did something so for example you don't always have to go to africa and dig wells and, and provide clean water maybe it's paying for someone's coffee in the in the drive through line yeah maybe it's just saying hello to someone on the yep. street you know even though you're not feeling good yourself and you have created that like self-sense where it's just like you can read other people mm -hmm. when they're sad as well too but you know, you share your sadness with someone else. Yeah. It's just like, hey, have a good day, you know. Um, it's just like, and like that person notices or it's just like even so or like you keep it to yourself. I remember I used to walk by. I still do this sometimes, you know. It's just like I, 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 I'm I, lucky that I do have that, you know, skill where it's just like I can read like body language mm -hmm. and I know the Seattle. It's a good skill to have. Yeah, like the Seattle freeze is a real thing, yep. you know. So you can't necessarily <laughs> say anything, but it's just like in my mind, Mentally, it's just like I understand, you know, um, they're going through a hard time, and it's just like, dude, I, I wish you the absolute best, yeah. you know. Um, I, yeah, I think there's um there's been a couple of moments. I think there was one. Um, I was having a pretty bad day after work one day, and I was, it was when I was living in Seattle. I was walking to the bus stop, and I got to the bus stop, and there's a bunch of people there. And I don't know, this woman looked at me, and she was like, you're not having a good day today. And I was like, you know what? Honestly, I wish this day could go to hell. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, that's how bad my day has gotten. So she sat there, and she's like, tell me about your day. Just just tell me about your day. Complete, total stranger at the bus stop. I talked to her the entire bus ride. As soon as I got off, I was like, holy crap. I was like, that What was... an incredible woman. Yeah, I was like, what an incredible person to just take time out of their day and go, you know, there seems to be that something, there's something bugging you today. What is it? How can I help? Yes. And, you went, and sometimes... Sometimes that all that, that that's all it takes. You know, that's all it takes, and I think, you know, like just like simple selfless action. Sometimes, mm. you know, even if it's for yourself or if it's for other people, that makes all the difference. Yeah, and there's and there's also like there's also like different theories too with it. Um, I think, I think I guess one of the biggest ones we, we talked about it earlier was positive positive emotion yep um there's also engagement talking with other people mm -hmm. and there's your relationships to think that you know you, you if you have a significant other or if you have a group of friends or your family or you know yes. your friends your co-workers whatnot um and there's also some meaning and but there's also again what we talk about accomplishment actually doing something the act of doing something because i we i think we both had this at one point in time during our day we just like what the point what what's the point of getting up off the couch yep. today? like what is the point i've i've got no motivation or something and you're like you know what if i just do this small thing i think the, fir the first thing that i do every morning is I, as i make my bed every morning I make my oh bed. yeah because that is a signal of accomplishment and i don't know where at the, i think i heard i think it was sort of like navy seal giving a, a giving like a ceremony like a graduation mm -hmm. talk or whatnot and he was saying First thing you get up in the morning is make your bed because it's a, it's a signal of accomplishment. 
So when I get done with that, I walk out, and if there's dirty dishes, thing, I was like, well, I can clean that because I just, I just did my bed. Then you walk out, it's like, oh, the floor needs to be picked up, or it needs to be swept, or there's things that need to be put away. And then you get outside, and you get going through the day, and you find different things that kind of keep you going. At the end of the day, you look back, it's like, holy smokes, that was a great day. I got so much done. And you have a feeling of personal happiness. Yeah, and like also as well, too, it's just like it, even if it's small, you know, just like – I, I can't make my bed. It's just like maybe I'll just, you know, walk to the kitchen, mm-hmm. you know, before 10 o'clock, you know, and like yeah. get a glass of water, you know. Dude, that is a sense of an accomplishment as well too, you know. Like the biggest thing is just like there's a lot of, you know, ways that we can, you know, grow and heal, you know, whether it's like through therapy, you know, prescribed medicine, you know, like exercise, all of that. Mm-hmm. But everybody's uh, each to their own and you know what's the best for you you know i think we all really enjoy that fantasy of just like i hope to win the lottery you know and get 20 million dollars in my bank account you know be able to <laughs> pay off the bills right you know get your dream house a car and all that but i think what i really enjoy about all of that is you know even now it's just like it's just like you think the struggle will be gone and i do remember th- there were times in my life where I was like in the complete struggle and it's just like I didn't know how I was going to make it and I think you know even now I'm still struggling but it's different and I think you know what has kept me going is not necessarily happiness but it is you know the drive of like I want to see what I can do yeah and and for that that has made me happy because seeing, you know, like, what we're all capable of, I think that there is, you know, great joy in that. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's something for to be said for, like, you know, there's, there. Okay, there, I think the one advice, one, one piece of us is there is no blueprint. So there don't, isn't. like, don't, like, think that we're reading off, like, some kind of blueprint to find happiness is the, happiness is so personal like it mm-hmm. there is no blueprint you can't go out and, and tell someone this is how you become happy you can say that there these are things that have worked for me yes and these are things that i've seen that work for others yeah but there is there is there is no blueprint for happiness there's no blueprint for life there's no blueprint for anything you have to figure it out on your own yeah and even psychology today i'm going to read this um right off the article it says every person has a unique experience and therefore unique experiences of happiness with that being said you know um what makes someone happy in their 20s may not spark joy for a person in their 80s you know and and it may not be relevant for the people in their 20s. It's valuable for people to continue to observing and revising what makes them happy at a given time and continuing to strive for famil- through striving for fulfillment throughout their lifetime. Yeah. I think um I think that's that kind of speaks to it as like an example is like when I, when I was a kid, you know there's a lot of like there was all this family around, you know, trying to get that sense of community. So that, when I was a kid, I took that for granted. But now growing up, it's like, I don't want that newest console. I don't want that newest phone. I don't want that newest card. What I want is I want three people that can come over and we can play video games and we can drink a little bit and we can talk and we can have a good time. That, to me, is like the ultimate moment of happiness is when I'm around my friends now Mm -hmm. or when I'm around my community or when I'm around my Washington family. Like That makes me so freaking happy because – yeah, sure. I work with two of my Washington family members. Yeah, and I'm coworkers with them. Mm-hmm. But you know, I I also go to their house. I'm part of their family too. And it's when I um when I did my move from Seattle to to where I live now, um, I crashed on a couch on my friend's place. And for the first time in about three years, legitimately felt like I was part of a family because I came home. They have they have two kids, and it's and it's and and then it's uh those two, and. It was like the first time in a, such a long time I had like I had family time. I was like, man, this is this is awesome. And you come home from work and boom, you have your family right there. And it's like, God, that is such a that is such a cool moment to have. And I'm like, man, I, I wish you know other people could find that too. And again, it's not a blueprint, but it there is something to be said about that kind of the communication relationship aspect 
that brings in, I guess, a little bit more happiness than 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 something else. And I guess that's it for me. But it. No, oh, and I think you know, like for you, you mentioned you know community, and like for me, it is uh, seeing like other people like strive in their careers mm. and them able to do the impossible. Personal success. Uh, yeah, um, I remember you know when we were starting you know this podcast. Um, Josh had a different co-host in mind, and he was uh, not necessarily he was down and out. Yeah, but I was pretty bummed. Not even gonna was, lie, I was I was I was really depressed that this thing wasn't gonna happen. It wasn't going to happen, and like for me, you know, just being like the media guy that I am, and I want to see like I'm, I'm like very invested into my work and doing everything. Like I think there isn't really a moment where I'm not working. There's not there's not too many times. Would you consider it work or would you consider it doing your passion? Yeah, I think it's passion, honestly. Yeah. Like I don't really work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like I, 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 I don't really work. I just do what I love. Um, I've never worked a day in my life. There you go. Hey, um, if you, like, what, that's the other thing. And, is if you find a yeah. job that you're ha- if you find something that you like, you'll never work a day in your life. And this is like like my own advice, you know, or or like my own perspective is. I just don't do things that make me sad, you know? It's just like, if I feel like I don't belong here, it's just like, maybe you don't. Like, just get out, you know? It's okay with leaving the party early. You don't have to reach, you know, like, okay, it's 10, everybody's starting to leave, now I'll leave. No, if you're not having fun, dude, just leave. Like, yeah. you know? And, like, when I heard Josh, like, really bummed, it's just like, one, I was offended. He asked someone else besides <laughs> me. <laughs> To be the co-host because it's just like we had talked about this for so long but also as well too it's just like what better like not coach but it's just like it's just like you're doing this with a friend and and we're like building each other up because all of our happiness you know doesn't come from me you know it comes from other people as well too and it's just like continuing to experience life yeah, I think uh, that, I think along the lines of the podcast stuff was like, mm-hmm. you know, when we when I first like, we had talked about this on last season, mm-hmm. which you know we moved into the house, you know, COVID had hit, you know, and you know the lockdown and the pandemic started, and all we had was basically each other because all the bars closed, all the restaurants are closed, you couldn't go outside because you know it just it, it wasn't XYZ. safe to do that, and so that's like Greg and I started talking, and I was like, this dude is fucking awesome i was like i was like how like how lucky did i get that i have a roommate who lives a couple doors down from me that one is into media which i'm into and two is like it's he's not like a stuck up uh, i'm not going to use that word he's not a stuck up prick like he's a down to earth kind of chill guy who's just like let's talk a yeah, couple coffee let's it. talk let's sit on the porch and like talk and so yeah, there, there, there were, there's a lot of, there was a lot of moments of happiness in that where I look back and I'm like, holy smokes, am I so great, grateful I moved in that house? You know, granted, there were a lot there of a moments. Lot of, there was a lot of sad moments as well too. Yeah. We're not going to uh, disregard that as well too. But That's... the biggest thing that you know Josh and I did, you know, I think that made that very tolerable for us is that we weren't going to let those like like sad and stressful moments uh wreck our friendship yeah because we both knew like at the end of the day like this was very momentary and the reason why i was attracted to josh and alan is just like dude he was just like has a good heart and you don't meet too many people like that you know um especially like as you get older like everything becomes it's kind of weird it's just like it's almost like business personalities yeah. where it's just like Oh, it's business, you know. Like even though like you are friends, it's like it's like you almost like you're waiting for them to give the business card. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Like hey, let's do this. You right. Know? Hey, let's do, you know let's do the collabs, do the projects, and that did happen. And that did I, happen. And you know, it's kind of funny is that that's along also the line of like personal happiness too is you um, is finding sorry finding the route to personal happiness is. You know, you you meet someone, or you or you come in contact with something or an idea that gets your head off to like this rush, and that was like the podcast thing because it it started back in February with this dude I was on meeting on a community. We're like, yeah, let's get a podcast together, so that you know, a few months of building up to this, and finally we get the podcast launched. But it's not with that guy; mm-hmm. it's with Greg. 
and myself. And I was like, you know what? I'm so I I was a lot more happier that I did with Greg because I was like, I actually know the guy. We actually have history together, as short as it was. You know, we actually do have history. We know how to we know how to talk to each other because what you guys don't understand is like, yeah, uh, off camera, um, when when Greg and I weren't on camera at the house, I mean, there was a lot of conversations. I think oh yeah, it was like what every night we were on the couch. every night. Yeah. Like it wasn't even like like a 20 minute talk. It was like No, these were like, like 4 or 5 hour conversations. Yeah, these were we would be talking for 4 or 5 hours, yeah. you know, and it could be about like whatever. Yep. Sometimes Josh did all the talking, honestly. Sometimes yeah, And yeah, then yeah. the other nights I did all the talking. Right. But what what the important part was is just like we were just trying to talk and trying to connect because I know like we'll probably do an episode, you know, like probably next season talking about the whole COVID-19 effects um, and like more of our experiences at mm. that house. But like during that time period, you know, it's just like we, we like we were from because it's just like you got to think about this in a second. It's just like we were thrown into a house and all of a sudden it's just like you all have to live together. You can't go out and it's just like well this is kind of interesting you know there's what seven different people eight of us eight eight of us you know who had like no one had prior you know um history with anyone any with anyone and it's just like now you all have to become friends you know or you know enemies or whatever you (laughs) would like to uh, view it but like you know that was kind of like whoa you know um but it it, it actually worked out really well, you know, and I'm just, like, grateful uh, for that time, you know. Like, happiness and sadness is sa- and sadness are always going to be there. I think as long as we acknowledge both, you know, when they are happening, I don't think, you know, anything's really that bad after all. Yeah. And I think, it, yeah, it's, and, you know, as we're wrapping up this episode on, on it, I think, one other note I think I have on, on like personal happiness is like this is kind of coming from. So I did um when I when I moved to Washington I got first, you know the I got the first uh, wave of seasonal depression, right? Um you know because yeah, for no. those of you who don't live in Washington State for about six months out of the year, um you see the sun maybe if you're lucky three four times a month. Mm-hmm. It rains all the time. It's very dark and it's very gloomy. So. When I first moved to Washington, my, like, the first, I think it was, like, the second day, the second full day I was in Washington State, it was gloomy, and it was rainy, and I was like, I don't want to do crap. Like, I don't want to do anything. And the landlady would look at me, and she was like, yeah, you're going to have to get used to this. I was like, this is not Virginia where it's sun mm-hmm. all the time. You know, this is Washington State. The sun doesn't really come out, so you just, you kind of have to find that. So, even though the clouds are gray and even though the skies are nasty and even though it looks like it's about to dump on you when you wake up every morning you got to have a mindset of i have to do something i have to do a thing and i have to get up because if you just lay there par- uh, lay there horizontal on the bed you know and you just do nothing all day by the time the day ends you feel kind of crummy like that's just like that's how i feel i'm i feel that's probably a lot of other people and the one advice i have for you is just get up and do something make your bed clean your room go to the living room and turn on the tv instead of watching it on your ipad on your your bed Mm -hmm. like even if you're gonna watch cartoons all day get up and move around just move just move um so yeah that's where we're gonna end off on this episode we hope you guys enjoyed um any last other thoughts from you greg if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah. Just remember, at the end of the day, we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great way to end this episode. We guys hope you have a good one. As always, episodes come out Tuesday, 5 p.m., 42 Studios. Um, Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Have a good one, guys.